Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to Ross tutorial number two. This is going to be about publishing and subscribing. So in the last tutorial, we saw, saw how to install Ross and how to run the TurtleBot simulator and drive it around. And this time we'll actually get to some code. So uh, when you're programming in Ross, um, it really encourages you to separate your code out into different modules or different components that each do one thing. Um, so each program that you write that does this one specific thing is called a node. Um, so in this example, we have uh, three different nodes. So one node might just read the odometer on the robot's wheels and tell you where the robot is relative to where it started from. Um, another node might be the path planner that tells you how to go from point A to point B. And then a third node might be um, something that, uh, given uh, a, a velocity command, actually tells the motors on the robot to move in a certain way to achieve that velocity. Um, and so the way in which all of these di disparate uh, programs will communicate with each other is through topics. So a topic is kind of like a named channel uh, that nodes can send data on to other nodes. So in this case, the first topic uh, for the odometry is called odom. Um, and the second topic, let's say um, the path planner outputs uh, velocity commands that need to be uh, executed. Um, so this is called cmdvel, or command velocity. And then the data that actually gets sent on the topics um, are called messages. So here the odometry is telling us that the robot is at this XYZ position, and the path planner might say that the um, robot needs to go forward by 0 0.2 but not turn at all. So those are messages. So we'll talk about each of these separately. So let's start with um, kind of the rules for publishing and subscribing. It's actually very flexible, so um, any node can publish a message to any topic as long as you know the name of the topic. And any node can subscribe to any topic. So publishing just means um, you're sending message on the topic. And then subscribing means that you're sort of registering that you want to see all the data that comes on the topic. Uh, multiple nodes can publish to the same topic, so there's no restriction on that. Um, and similarly, uh, there's no restriction on how many nodes can subscribe to a particular topic. And um, likewise, uh, a node can publish or subscribe to multiple topics. There's no limit to how many topics a node can publish or subscribe to. Um, there are some uh, good command line tools for uh, examining the structure of your nodes and your topics. So ROS node list will uh, provide a list of all of the nodes that are running. And then if you want to get some more detailed information about the node, you can use ROS node info and then you provide the name of the node. So um, this is particularly helpful because it'll tell you what topics that node is currently publishing to or subscribing to. Uh, similarly for topics, you have ROS topic list. So this will give you a list of all the topics that are being published or subscribed to. And if you say ROS topic info, then you'll get uh, all of the nodes that are publishing to that topic, all of the nodes that are subscribed to that topic, and another useful command is ROS topic echo, which will print out the data that's being published on that topic. And then finally, um, another useful command is ROS topic pub, which uh, is short for publish. Um, so uh, basically, you supply the name of a topic and then the, the type of the message and then uh, the actual data that you want to send, and it will send a message on that topic. Um, so the data is um, formatted using YAML. Um, it's not very easy to construct uh, by hand, especially on a command line. Um, so you can actually use tab completion to get a, a pre-formatted version of this, which is useful. Um, I forgot to mention that all messages are of a particular type, and all topics are of a particular type. So you can't if a topic um, 
is like for string data, for example, you can't publish a number onto that topic. Um, so we'll, we'll see that in more detail uh, once we actually make a topic and um, start writing code. So again, a message is basically a format that allows code written in C++ and Python to talk to each other. It's a common format that's sent over these topics so that nodes can communicate. Um, and actually what happens is that you create your message in a .message file using a special uh, format. And then when you compile your code, it will actually compile um, this message file into C++ and Python classes that you can work with. And it will basically handle all the serialization and deserialization of the data for you. OK, so um, another important concept is the ROS master. The ROS master is uh, a server that keeps track of all the nodes. It keeps track of which node is publishing to which topic, which node is subscribed to which topic, and so on. Um, and you need to have a ROS master running in order for the whole ROS system to work. Um, now, uh, it's important to remember that the master does not actually handle any of the data that's being published itself. Um, the master is actually just keeping track of meta information, like which nodes are out there, and um, who's publishing what, and what their IP addresses are. Um, so the way this works is um, the publisher comes up and it tells the master, hey, I'm publishing on this topic, and also this is my address. And the master will keep note of that. Now if someone comes up and they say, hey, I want to subscribe to this topic, then the master will say, oh, I know someone who's publishing on that topic. And it will inform the subscriber about this uh, publisher. And the subscriber will then uh, set up a peer-to-peer -peer connection with the publisher. And so from then on, the publisher will send the data directly to all the subscribers on this topic. Um, now, the master uh, tends to be uh, running on a known I IP address. So your publisher and your subscriber just sort of know where to contact it because it's hard-coded in the system. Um, this is what the ROS master URI is. Uh, so for example, if you're running, running ROS on uh, just a single computer, this is typically uh, localhost colon 11311. Uh, so 11311 is the, is the default port number for the ROS master. Um, otherwise, uh, for all the other nodes, the port number will sort of be chosen at random. Um, and so this is how everyone finds each other. Basically, they, the, the master's address is hard-coded, and then it keeps track of where everyone is so that they can all find each other. Uh, and finally, uh, there's two different ways in which you can start a ROS master. One is by running the ROS core command. So this command will just launch the ROS master uh, directly. Um, it turns out that if you run ROS launch and there isn't a ROS core already running, then it will start a ROS core for you automatically. Um, so this is a little bit handy, but it can also be a bit dangerous because if for some reason Let's say you, you ROS launch one launch file, and then you ROS launch a, a second launch file, and then you shut down the first ROS launch, you're going to lose that ROS master as well. And so the second uh, launch file is also going to stop working. So it's generally safer to just create a ROS core in a terminal and just leave that running. OK, so with that, let's uh, get to some code. Um, if you look on the ROS tutorials, they have a, you know good code samples for how to write a publisher and subscriber. And so we're going to refer to those tutorials. But I think that those examples are kind of like toy examples as well. And so I wanted to do something that was a little bit more interesting and actually seeing stuff with the turtle bot. So kind of the way I imagine this working is that it's going to be just like in the last tutorial, where we'll start up the simulator and we'll drive the turtle bot around. But the turtle bot will subscribe to its current position um, as given by the odometry topic. And then it will publish 
the closest landmark that it's to and the distance to it. So by landmark, I mean basically each of these objects here uh, in the simulated playground. So we've got the barrier, the cylinder, the dumpster, and so on. Um, and we're just going to define locations like here, 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 and here, which are um, just arbitrary locations that are close to each of these objects. Um, and so we'll publish the distance from the robot to each of these all constantly. Um, another thing is that we'll, we'll define a one meter diameter circle around each uh, location. And whenever the robot enters that location, it will personally print out, I'm near the cube uh, in its own process. So we'll see uh, that working. Um, so that just it's just a little bit more of an interesting example of subscribing to something, doing something with that information, and then publishing some other information out. OK, so we're actually going to do all of the coding in the next video, uh, just to try and keep the videos a little bit shorter. Um, so in the next video, we'll see how to create a Catkin workspace. This is how you uh, build ROS code. We'll create a ROS package. We'll create our own message type. And we'll see how to gather all the landmark locations and implement a monitor that tells us when the robot is close to one of those landmarks. So we'll see you in the next video.